or the staples of earlier ma American manufacturing. We're here today at Lowell National Historic Park visiting the textile mills, which are also along the Merrimack Canal, as previously mentioned in the first episode. So here we are at the Boot and Cotton Mills Museum, part of the Lowell National Historic Site. And this is where the mill girls work. The mill girls would live over there. And it's located right in the Middlesex Canal. And here was one of the big textiles in the early, in the early uh, 18th and 19th century where textiles would be made. And it was a big cotton museum. So they would develop the cotton and turn it into textiles and ship it all around the country from here. All right, so we're here inside the Boot Textile Museum here. Uh, so this is where like, the uh, cotton girls they use the textile. An example, you know, this is where they clock in their time clocks and everything. Um, uh, this is an example of how we do machines here. Yeah, this is how they do stuff. To my right here, there's uh, some active ones. So at least you can see how uh, it actually operates. transition from America from more agriculture based to more manufacturing. So here we have a lash and loom. So before they had these big textile factories, down south what they would do is slave owners would use their slaves to pick the cotton and then use the cotton to, uh, to create textiles from these machines right here. So you can definitely tell by the scale of this machine that it was a lot smaller. So before they had the giant factories up north, down south and make everything in house and obviously can't do that as much of a scale so what they would do is once the slaves picked all the cotton they would send it up to the to the north New England especially especially Massachusetts and places like Lowell and they have these giant fact, uh, factories like you saw downstairs where they would just have rows and rows and rows of workers just constantly making textiles and it would be loud and they wouldn't care about anything that the workers like thought all they would do is just keep making and making so you could see machines like this is are the small scales what inspired the large scale of today. And because we had such large scale, we were able to make so much more in the economy, especially of the group. So before they would actually make the textiles, first they'd have to turn the cotton into the actual thread. So here what you have is a throttle spinning thread. So this is based off an old British design because the British were the ones who really started the Industrial Revolution. And so what they would do is you take all the cotton and you spin it onto the thread and you'd have very crude thread that you'd get from the cotton. And then what it would do is it spin it up super tight so it would actually get a consistent uh, diameter. And then from here, it would go through all the machine, it would go through the rolling process, and eventually it would turn into the thread that you see down here. And this is just one step in the process. So the, the textile process was 
actually a large like multi-step process obviously and what you would do is you go step by step so you go cotton then thread then textile and eventually it would turn into the final product that you could use for clothing and other fabric products and you can look at it over here this is a model of what the entire factory would look like so you can see that first you have the cotton making it into thread then you have the thread refinement making it into textile and here you have the looms and just look at the crazy amount of just people that you have all in one factory constantly working there were no breaks it was just you'd work all the time just to create as much profit as possible and as you can see from down here like we showed you earlier it's based right on the Merrimack Canal and so what they would do is it all be water powered and all that water power would transfer right into the looms and just make the whole machine work it was especially before electricity and it was really interesting because it's a way to actually create such high production without using the electricity because it hadn't been refined yet. And if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have any of what we have today. So here we have an example of one of the textile machines. You can see from the statue of a mill girl right here, she's putting the, she's putting the textile into a spinning jenny. And what it would do is, the t it, sorry, not the textile, the thread. The thread would be wrapped around the spinning jenny and she'd place it into the machine. Or sorry, the spinning jenny itself. And you'd place it into here and as the textile would be made, the spinning jenny would shoot across like what you guys saw earlier in the actual working machine. That's what's really cool about this museum. You have models of this, but then you can actually see how it's still operational. So it would shoot across and each, each time it would shoot across, it would shoot another thread apart, shoot a thread across. And then once you have the thread, you would just keep adding layers and layers until you had the final product. And with this product, you can see they weren't just able to do singular colors. They were able to make uh, dynamic patterns and anything they wanted. So they could do different colors based on the dyes. They could do just plain colors. Like if you look over here, you have a lot of the finished product of the textile and what it was able to make. So you could have vests, you could have shirts, you could have blankets, it could be anything. So this is truly the backbone of what we were looking at in this country and how we were able to develop and how we were able to grow such a high population just because even though the working conditions weren't very good around here, the, we were still able to produce a lot and it was required that these many people would be working here. Like, here's one of the later pictures of the mill workers, and you can see there's just so many of them, but the product you're able to make was able to truly industrialize the country as a whole. So such brutal conditions for the workers would often cause strikes, because workers would often have low wages as the centuries came on and the economy went up and down, and they'd also have They'd be working super long hours, like a lot of their hours back then were from 7 to 3 of constant work with little to no breaks. And that caused a lot of issues. Like I said earlier, it caused strikes and it caused just worker unrest. And all it does is it just hampers the, uh, the productivity of companies. And as the progressive era came about and unions started to grow, it brought a lot of new regulations. And with regulations came higher cost for these companies. And eventually, a lot of manufacturers and the heads of the companies just thought it wasn't profitable enough to be up here anymore. So, unfortunately for the business itself, it had to close down, and a lot of these companies were moving south. This one in particular, in the 20s and 30s, had been hit by a lot of hard times by the, the depression and just economic up and downturns and worker strikes and all the other just unfortunate things that can happen to a business. And eventually, just a combination of everything made the people who owned the business realize that it wasn't profitable to be here, and they eventually moved down south. And unfortunately, by the 1960s, this food factory was just finished all together, and they had moved down, and they just moved product production to somewhere cheaper. Because usually what happens in business is if you can't keep up production in a high expensive area, you're going to go somewhere else. You'll either... either outsourced to a different region of the country where the prices aren't so high and you can get more workers for cheap or you'll go outside the country where it's a similar situation but it's just unfortunate what happens to these super historic buildings like we're standing on this, the floors that were here when this building was pretty much created and it's really interesting to be here it's just a shame to see that something that was so something that was so productive was just ended all of a sudden but it is really cool to be here because we get to appreciate our local history and what we see in history class, what they'll teach in American history class in middle school and high school, we get to actually be here. And the museum, the National Park Service is actually able to come down here and just show us and just like allow us to appreciate what came before us and what made America what it is today. 
right, so as you can see, that uh, the, the whole textile industry was really more than just one. Right? All the employees here all full of all the blooms and the, the weaving. And they also had a lot of places to house these, uh, these a, lot of, a lot of little girls who work here, but just people in general who work here. A lot of people have their own housing, so that place for them to live so that they can just come and work. But, uh, you know, it, it, as you saw earlier, Tells you to go places, obviously. So if you're on that now, and much easier to um, sh ship things out as quickly as possible. You see the train tracks here as well. Once the trains start to uh, uh, take prevalence, and trains right through, so that they loaded all the textiles to be shipped out. Same with the canal. Now off of the hydropower to well, that's the shipping power to mills. Um, but a lot of the towns were built around the uh, like the whole facilities. Here. to the textile factories here. Short, short commute. So that was the Lowell Mills on the Merrimack Canal in uh, obviously Lowell, Massachusetts. Thank you very much for watching this episode. It was really cool to go out and kind of continue the Merrimack Canal episode. So last time we were in Bilrica looking at the Merrimack Canal Museum and the locks. And today we're actually at the mill areas that powered the United States for 200 years. Like, uh, once, thanks again for watching this video and tune in next time. Thank you.